Hi guys, I'm Jenna and welcome to my weekly recap for this week. As always, this is where I will share random things that I'm loving, product discoveries, pop culture things, just kind of whatever is holding my attention at the moment. And then as always, I will finish by answering a couple of questions from you guys. So it is the last day of August. Tomorrow is September and we're approaching Labor Day weekend, the unofficial end of summer, which is always a little bit bittersweet, but I have to say that I am excited and ready to welcome in fall, hence already in sort of a fall inspired outfit today. So it's only appropriate that one of the things I wanna talk about today are a couple of trends that I'm really excited about for this fall. And then I also wanna talk about my amazing recent thrift find, as well as a 2004 classic movie that I revisited this weekend for the first time in probably over a decade. So let's jump right in. First, I wanna talk about some fall trends that I'm really excited about. Of course, I think that we're going to continue to see 90s and 2000s trends revived and re-inspired, reimagined, and kind of mixed together. We have seen a huge resurgence of 90s trends over the past few years, and now we're starting to see a lot of 2000s styles thrown into the mix, and it's become this really interesting new interpretation of 90s and 2000s fashion. But I think we're gonna see a couple of trends that we've already seen a lot of in the summer continue through in the fall in a little bit different way. And the first one, which I'm really excited about, is pleated skirts. We've seen a ton of pleated skirts already. They were really popular over the summer with things like tennis skirts, kind of the athleisure vibe, the skorts, and things like that, that people were wearing both to work out and also as casual wear. But I think as we approach fall, we see it in fabrics and patterns like plaids or maybe even tweeds, which feel obviously a lot dressier than a athleisure skirt, but also really make me think of Gossip Girl and this very preppy vibe that was really popular in the 2010s. Now that's a whole different conversation that we could have because I have started seeing a few specific 2010s inspired styles popping up in things that I'm seeing people wear out around New York City, but that's a conversation for another time. Since we still have so many really prominent 90s inspired trends, I think mixing that with the more feminine or more preppy elements like a plaid pleated skirt, for example, does keep it feeling a little bit more edgy, a little bit more cool, and definitely more casual than what we saw in the 2010s when we were all wearing like business casual everywhere we went. <laughs> I could see a plaid pleated skirt being paired with Doc Martin combat boots or, you know, an oversized chunky sweater rather than a loafer or a pump like Blair Waldorf would have worn. I think a pleated skirt is a super versatile item. I have one that just happens to be in kind of a spring summer color palette, so I probably won't carry that too far into fall, but I have found that I can wear it in so many different ways. I could wear it with a button down shirt to keep it like very preppy. I could wear it with a casual sweater. Even just a t-shirt and sneakers looks really cute, really on trend, and I think we'll continue to see those types of versatile pieces being worn in all of these different ways as we continue through fall and of course in seasons to come as well. I've also heard a lot of people talking about tights and of course when we're talking about the girl boss era, which I like to call it, but by that I mean the business casual preppy aesthetic of the early 2010s, tights were huge. They were also really popular in the sort of tumbler, American apparel, indie fashion trend that was happening simultaneously in the early 2010s. And I think we're gonna see them come back around, but again, reimagined and paired with more 90s inspired accessories that feel a little bit more current to the fashion trends now. Either way, I'm super excited about the trend. I totally plan to buy into it. <laughs> I think I'm going to look for a solid colored pleated skirt, maybe in like a burgundy or a deep green or maybe even like a chocolate brown that could be really cute and versatile for the fall. But I might also go for a plaid one because I mean, you really can't go wrong. The second trend that I'm really excited about seeing is corduroy. So I have seen corduroy become really, really, really big in recent months. Even over the summer, I was seeing corduroy mini skirts and things like that pop up in stores. But I think corduroy is going to be massive this fall. I've already seen it in every single store that I've gone into. 
I loved corduroy in the 90s and the 2000s. Corduroy to me feels like a trend that really carried through several years. I don't know about you guys, but I literally remember wearing corduroy in the 90s and I was wearing it into high school. I think the last pair of corduroys that I remember vividly having was probably in about 2003 or 2004 and they were a pair of chocolate brown lucky brand flare corduroys that i got from the buckle honestly i would wear them now because all those styles are back in are back in now i like it because it does feel really nostalgic to me just because it's something that i remember so vividly and i remember wearing for such a long time but i also think it's a really fun and versatile trend for example a corduroy skirt is great for this time of year because it's like the time of year when you want to be wearing fall things but it's still a little too hot so I feel like a corduroy skirt would be perfect for that. And I'm especially loving it in really, really fall colors like a rust color or a burgundy or even like a navy blue would be really pretty. So I'm all here for that trend and I hope it sticks around because it was a favorite of mine. The second thing I wanna talk about is my most recent thrift find. So I get asked about thrifting all the time. People wanna know where I like to thrift and how I like to thrift and which items from my videos I thrift versus which are mine and things like that. I've said it before, I absolutely love thrifting both for my own wardrobe and for my videos. And I've been thrifting for a long time, even before I started making these videos. But every once in a while, there's an item that I want for nostalgia purposes, whether it's just to have or for a specific video that I don't have anymore. And I'm always looking for something that is as close to the item as possible. And this is a recent success story that I'm really excited about. I found a bunch of magazines and catalogs when I was at my mom's and one of them that I found was this Just Nikki catalog from Spring Break 1998. For some reason, every single page of this catalog is like a vivid memory for me. I must have studied the pages of this catalog, but it brought back so many memories. So when I was looking through it recently, I saw a pair of pants that I thought, hmm, those are cute. Like I would wear those now. So these are the pants. They're like a blue track pant with an orange stripe down the side. And this was crucial in the 90s and early 2000s was to have the zipper at the ankle because then you could control the amount of flare of the legs so they would appropriately cover your shoe depending on what type of shoe you're wearing. So these were the inspiration for the pants. Obviously, I can no longer order from this Just Nikki catalog from 1998. So I took two thrifting. When I'm looking for something really specific, I tend to use thrifting websites or resale websites because it's just easier to search online than it is to go physically to a store and like dig through all of the racks. So because I didn't think I would be able to find the actual pants from this catalog, I went to thread up. Had I been looking for a specific brand or a specific style, I would always go to eBay or maybe even Poshmark or something like that because those sellers tend to be very detailed. And if you know the brand or the style, you can easily search it and find results that match it. But since I was looking for something that was just the same color palette and the same style, but I didn't really care about the brand or the era or whatever, I went to ThreadUp. ThreadUp is a resale site, if you're not familiar, that has just like a massive amount of inventory. And I have really good luck finding very specific items on there. I had to comb through several pages of results, but this is what I found. These are the track pants that I found on ThreadUp. So they are the perfect color blue and they even have the perfect color this like bold kind of reddish orange stripe down the side. Super cute. They are a shinier fabric. The ones in the Just Nikki catalog were a little bit more of like a wind pant material and these are more of a track pant material, but the colors were exactly what I was looking for and it even has the zipper at the ankle. I was thrilled when I found these. They have a drawstring at the waist and they were in my size. So if you're a thrifter, you know what a rush it is to find the perfect item and have it be in your size. So I bought them immediately, obviously. So again, inspo pant and what I found. So good, right? And then the last thing I want to talk about is a movie that I watched this past weekend. It's from 2004 and it was one that I really loved back in the day, but I haven't seen in years and it is the movie Saved. So if you have never seen this movie, run to Amazon Prime right now and watch it. It is a satire about religious teenagers at a Christian school. <laughs> 
<laughs> made in 2004. It stars Jenna Malone, Macaulay Culkin, and Mandy Moore. One thing that I found really interesting about it is that it came out in 2004, which means it was probably filmed in 2003, but the fashion in the movie, particularly Jenna Malone's character, she's the main character, seem to be very Y2K inspired. So this is something that I have noticed a lot just in looking back at pictures and things that I have from when I was younger and then comparing to like nostalgia content creators and kind of just conversations in the public discourse and conversations that I have with people and is that we tend to think that things happened sooner than they actually did. So for example, looking back at fashion, I see a lot of people talk about popped collars on polo shirts and belts around the hips and long layered tank tops as an early 2000s thing. But in reality, those fashions really didn't happen until the later 2000s or at the very least the mid 2000s. The first of those trends that I remember actually seeing people wear are the popped collar polo shirts and that was around 2005. It certainly wasn't happening in 2002, 2003, you know, early 2000s. So in watching Saved, I thought to myself, wow, these fashions really look like what I would think people were wearing in more like 2001 versus 2004. So I don't know if that was an intentional choice because these teens are supposed to be very sheltered, you know, because of the environment that they live in, perhaps they dress a little bit outdated and Jenna Malone's character in particular dresses very young for her age. She's supposed to be a high school senior and she wears like a one piece bathing suit, for example, which I certainly never would have done as a high school senior. Or if it was just that our memories are not necessarily super accurate and those trends were carried through a lot longer than we tend to think that they are. It's probably a combination of both. I know for one example, I definitely still wore my hair flipped out like Mary-Kate and Ashley wore it in like 1999 and 2000. I was still wearing that in 2003. So who knows? But anyway, the movie in general is hilarious. The cast is just so great. Mandy Moore's character is hilarious. And it is a satire mostly about religion, but I think it's also really funny as kind of a satire of teen movies. It kind of touches on every single one of the tropes of a classic teen movie, especially from that era. Jenna Malone is the main character who has to learn some sort of life lesson and kind of evaluate her beliefs and her values and her priorities. Mandy Moore is the popular girl who falls from grace. And then there's the misfit kid, Macaulay Culkin's character, who finds, you know, a place where he feels comfortable. And then of course, there's a prom scene where everything goes down. So it really touches on every single one of those cliches of a teen movie, but kind of flips it on his head and it's really, really funny. So I had forgotten how good it was. The vibes are just perfect. Every, all the makeup is frosted. Everything is like a light blue palette. It's just very, very early 2000s. So if you want to revisit it, it is on Amazon Prime. Highly recommend, honestly. And then as always, I'm gonna wrap up with a couple of questions from you guys. These are questions that I just seem to get frequently. Sometimes I pick out a random question, but I have two this week. And the first one is one that I always find difficult to answer, but it's a question that I get often. And it is, what is my favorite year? As a nostalgia creator, I definitely tend to zero in on certain years. When I look at my content, a lot of my content is from kind of 2000, maybe 2001, 2004, 2009, and 2012. It's really almost impossible for me to choose one year to be my favorite, but those four are definitely at the top. 2000 was my eighth grade school year. And looking back, I feel like there was just so much iconic stuff happening. I mean, the fashion was amazing. It was the millennium, which was like, the talk, everybody could not get their head around the fact that we were entering a new millennium. And the entire cultural aesthetic and dialogue and just everything was so focused on millennium, millennium, millennium. And it was like very future focused. Where I was personally in life as a middle schooler, I was obsessed with the Backstreet Boys and I got to go see their Millennium Tour. I mean, even their album was called Millennium. It was just like such a thing. 2004 
is a second favorite because it was my junior and senior year. So my junior year was 0304 and my senior year was 0405. So 2004 kind of crossed over um, those two years. And when I was a junior, I hung out with a lot of people in the class above me. So that summer between junior year and senior year, a lot of my friends had graduated and were going off to college. It was just really memorable. And then of course, fall of senior year, there's so many things that happen. It's such an exciting time. We had our senior homecoming and it was just such a good time. 2009 was my last year of college and it was like the start of the Jersey Shore era, which was like so tacky and over the top. I guess I like tacky and over the top, but also just a time in my life, which was super fun. I mean, your senior year of college, what's better than that, you know? It was so much fun. And then 2012, I don't know why I gravitate towards 2012, but I think that for some reason, culturally, it seems significant looking back. I think the fashion at that time was really easy to pinpoint. It was very specific. Call Me Maybe came out and you literally couldn't escape it. And it was also the year that I moved uh, for te from Texas to the East Coast. So that stands out in my mind too. For my second Q&A question today, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. I get a lot of questions about my favorite whatever, my favorite products, my favorite TV shows, my favorite stores, things like that. So I'm going to do a rapid fire of a few of my absolute favorite products in categories that I get asked about a lot. And also just a couple of randoms that I just feel very passionately about. Favorite skincare, youth to the people. I'm holding up this cleanser because this is my favorite product from them. It is a gel cleanser. I don't know why, but it is so good. You can get it at Sephora. Favorite sunscreen, Super Goop. I swear by it. This is their face sunscreen called Unseen Sunscreen. It literally feels like a primer, but I use all of their products. I use their body sunscreen spray. I use this for my face. And then they have a lotion that you can use on the body as well. You can also get this at Sephora. Favorite self tanner. I get this question a lot because I swear by self tanner. I actually have a few, but I would say my top two are Beauty by Earth, which I am currently out of. It is a really beautiful cream that blends very, very well and the color looks super natural and it's noticeable right away. So overnight, if I put that on, go to sleep and I wake up, I have a tan the next morning. But then for a budget friendly version, this is B Tan. This one is the B Tan Forever and Ever, but they have a whole bunch of different ones that are different colors and various levels of tan. You can get this on Amazon for 10 bucks. I think they also sell it at Walmart and maybe like CVS. Make sure you use a mitt if you're gonna use this because it will stain your palms. But this goes on really, really, really smoothly too. And I like that it has a bronzer so you can see where you're applying it and then the color also develops. It will rub off on your clothes a little bit in between the application and when you shower, but it doesn't stain. So I usually put it on at night and then shower in the morning. Favorite foundation. Okay, this was a tough one for me because I don't like foundations because I don't like to feel or look like I have a lot of stuff on my face but I still want some coverage, which is obviously hard to find. So this Born This Way from Too Faced is amazing. It's super light. Like I don't feel like I have anything on my face. It doesn't look cakey at all. It doesn't settle into lines because when you're over 30, you have to think about things like that, but it still has a good amount of coverage and you can build it. So Sephora, Ulta, whatever, it's Too Faced. I love this stuff. And these are a couple wild card categories that people don't typically ask what my favorite of these things are, but these are two products that I just really, really love and I always tell people about. The first is body lotion. Again, random category, but this Flamingo body lotion from Target. I don't know why, but this stuff is the best body lotion I've ever used. It smells really good. It kind of smells like a hotel lobby or like products you'd find in a hotel. I swear there's a hotel chain that uses products that are this scent and they pump this scent into their lobby, but it's super moisturizing without being greasy and it has like actual skincare ingredients in it, which again, after 30, you have to think about skincare for your body. Target. Last, this product I actually discovered completely by accident. I got a sample of it somewhere and I was obsessed with it and I have been buying it ever since. It is this Himalayan salt scrub for your scalp by Goop. It smells like a literal spa and it's like a salt scrub, but it works like a shampoo. So it lathers really, really well. And I use it in place of my shampoo, usually about once a week. And it's great because it takes all like the gunk off your scalp and it leaves my hair feeling really good. It doesn't dry out my actual hair. I live in a place where the water is on the harder side. So I use a clarifying shampoo for my actual hair, but this feels really, really good on my scalp. I love this stuff. Again, Sephora. 
That's it for the weekly recap for this week. Let me know in the comments if you have ever seen Saved and what your favorite trends are for the fall that you're looking forward to wearing. And I will see you next week.